So welcome to Move and Meditate today. Um, I would love us to begin our practice uh, with a mudra. So before you come into child's pose, which is um, where we are starting, I will walk up to the camera and show you mudra we're taking on both of our hands. So it's called Prana Mudra, for which we touch the thumb to the tip of the ring and pinky finger and allow a peace symbol to shine up into the air, because that's what it looks like. So we've got a V-shape here between the index and the middle finger. Now we're using this mudra, as I said, on both of our hands, and we will come down onto our knees. I'm gathering that you might have things like uh, blocks or bolsters, comfort, things like cushions and blankets near you. If you haven't, that is your moment now of gathering all of those things. Um, and then when you start walking your hands forward, you might notice that knees close or wide isn't quite yours and feel free to choose between the two as you bring your arms forward, if the head doesn't want to rest on the floor and be that for the reason of high blood pressure or any pressure problems in the head at all, you can rest the head onto a block or support. And then once you've found your shape, turning the palms of the hands to face upwards today, your forearms can rest more or less comfortably on the ground. And you can then attempt prana mudra as you touch your thumb to the ring and little finger and expressing the other two fingers in that V shape as you're resting the head down. Please make sure that that's reasonably comfortable. And if you need to take your arms out a bit wider because there's a shoulder problem, none of that is an issue really. Just trying to incorporate the mudra to create a prana or the flow of it. And once you've found your space, you can relax the body into this space. If for whatever reason this uh, shape doesn't feel right, there's too much pressure on the knees, you might try a cushion between the thigh and the calf. Or if none of that works, please roll down onto your back. It's perfectly okay to rest on the back instead. And then coming into that sense of observation of the body. Noticing how the body is truly feeling. And if this mudra makes any difference to you, you might not notice that. It's okay not to, but um, trusting that it will still work. Noticing the gentle flow of your breath. And embracing whichever state you are in at this very moment. We are working with prana mudra to balance our energies. The reason for me to choose this mudra is that I would love to tap into the fourth yama or guidance for living and practicing. And this fourth yama is brahmacharya. It is often translated into celibacy. But in our modern day and age, we might not want to engage into that extreme. Instead, we could translate it to moderation.
Now, when we think about moderation, it does apply to the practice here. So you might set the intention of practicing within your range today. I would like to share what Sri Sri said about um, Brahmacharya. Identifying with the infinity is really what celibacy is. That means you don't find any big pleasure in a physical act to experience the joy because the joy is already there. Body has its cycle. It goes through cycles. Consciousness, not getting involved in it, is the real skill. This might express itself in anything that you do excessively. So maybe noticing more today or throughout the week, what impact things have that you do. As we release the mudra, wiggle your fingers, start to move your hips a little, maybe the shoulders, and then turn the palms of your hands down to touch the floor. Spread out your fingers as the arms are extending, lifting the head away from the ground, and lengthening through the spine as you breathe in. We're starting to come up onto all fours. You might align your knees underneath your hips now. And instead of going just into a cat and cow movement, I would ask you to explore the movement that feels balancing to your energies or prana. That could include circular movement of the hips, just random movements towards sides and the cat and cow movement, of course, as well. Anything that feels good and could help you balance your energies. Once you've moved freely like this for a little while, you might as well help yourself to some greater range of movement. And then we'll settle ourselves on these all fours. I would love you now to have your hands just that little bit out from underneath the shoulders and so no direct stacking of the shoulder over the wrist, just a tiny bit back. And then let's tuck the right toes under only and slide the foot out on the mat. So we're extending into this leg. As you inhale here, and as you're exhaling, push your fingertips to the front of the mat. And with that back out into the right heel, extending mainly across the back of the leg. And then let your right knee come back down towards the ground. Notice how much you have changed your position or your strength inside. And we'll do the same with the left foot. We're tucking the toes under on the left foot and then sliding the foot out onto the mat until the leg is extended. And then pushing the fingertips forward towards the top of the mat as we reach back into the heel of the left foot and maybe noticing that that extension could potentially feel a little bit different. And then let's bring both knees down towards the ground. I will leave you the choice of now coming into a kneeling plank. So your hands would, for that reason, step another hand width forward. 
you would round your back and then extend the hips out slightly. So we're starting to engage our lower abdomen and we're drawing our tailbone back towards the heels. Your hands are firm with Hasta Bandha on, so bases of fingers, heads of fingers in the floor. And you might notice that this is actually quite strong when engaged properly. However, if you want to go stronger, tuck the toes of both feet under and lift the knees off the floor. Re-engaging tailbone back towards the heels and we'll all make sure that there's space between the shoulder blades. Now, while you're holding this, put a little smile onto your face and take a deep breath. And if your knees were off the ground, bring them down now, untuck your toes and then stretch back into our starting position, but keep your arms really long. And even if the hips don't quite touch the heels, spread out your fingers, feel the reach into the sides of the body. Take a breath in. And when you're exhaling now, roll yourself up into sitting, let your hands slide up onto your thighs. If you're comfortable in this seat, we will practice a breathing technique or pranayam. You can stay there, but you could also use a helper such as a block or a bolster to sit on. In any case, whatever you're sitting on, it just needs to make you feel comfortable and that your spine can be extended with ease. For today's practice, I encourage you to work with Prana Mudra again, as you might touch your thumb to your ring and little finger and let the other fingers extend in a V shape. You could rest the backs of the hands now down onto your thighs or into your lap. And you might choose to close the eyes. And just allowing your hips to move a little so you can find um, the groundedness through your seat. Lengthen a little bit through the spine as you might have some wiggles into the torso. Move a little bit through the shoulders and the shoulder blades. And then move your head gently so that there's some movement maybe a check-in with your neck and then when you're ready you can close the eyes let your belly relax and start to breathe into belly ribs collarbones full yogic breaths and out from belly to ribs to collarbones Inhaling belly, ribs, collarbones, out belly, ribs, collarbones. Now, while you continue that, please feel free to add ujjayi breaths. So if you're familiar with that, otherwise don't worry about it today. And only use your jai if that's comfortable for you as we do practice moderation today. Know that your jai breath can also lower your blood pressure. So if it's already low, you might want to stay away from it for today. We will take this a little bit further into a reset breath. We will practice the same inhalation and at the top of it we're taking another sip of air and if that's okay for you hold the breath and then breathe out again from lower belly to ribs to collarbones as slowly as is available to you as you inhale belly ribs to collarbones take another sip of air although you might think you're filled Hold and breathe out again from belly to ribs to collarbones. I will leave you with this technique for a few rounds. If any part of this breath doesn't suit you today, please practice Brahmacharya. You can always step back to just full yogic breathing. 
Otherwise, let's sip at the end of the inhalation, a slight breath retention, and then a longer out breath. Allow one more breath like that after your current one. And then pause within the shape. Taking in your experience, what does it feel like for you? Hopefully you're feeling a little bit more balanced. Let your hands relax as well if you haven't done so yet. And you might wiggle through the fingers after the hold. And let your hands slide down by the sides of the body. Keep the eyes closed or the gaze steady, whichever you choose. And take a deep breath in as your arms are reaching out to the sides and lifting up over the head. You could even gently lift your head. And as you're breathing out, draw the hands right down in front of the heart space and touch potentially your thumbs lightly towards the sternum. Keeping your shoulders and arms at ease and the spine tall, the crown of the head towards the ceiling. We'll practice three rounds of OM to connect our energies as we breathe out to synchronize. Inhaling for the first OM. OM. As you take your next breath in, reach your arms up again. And as you're breathing out, let them soften back down by your sides. We'll change our position now and bring in a little bit more movement. So while we come up into standing, please do so very gently take your time remove any props from your mat but keep them maybe close by for an easier way of practicing so you might stand now facing the short edge of your mat and right at the top of the mat as well we begin in a mountain shape and there's two options for your feet. You can touch your big toes together and leave the heels gently apart for ease of hips. Or if you need a more solid stance, oftentimes it feels more grounded by separating the feet. 
let us ground down into the feet and think about the arches as you come to engage the feet and keep them lifted. Your toes are spread out onto the floor. You're engaging into the legs, leaving your pelvis more or less at neutral as you could encourage the lower belly very gently towards the tail. And you might turn the palms off your hands forward to complete your mountain, leaving yourself nice and tall in your stance. For moderation, it might be really nice to connect with our true selves. And I often envision that sitting more around our heart center energetically. So we will open the heart in our sequence today, as you might want to lift your arms out with the elbows bent or the arms straight leaving the palms of the hands facing forward and also expanding out into the fingers. If you like, you can get a little squeeze into the shoulder blades. And if you're feeling the neck is happy, push your chin a little forward before you guide it a bit upwards and open your gaze towards the sunlight. As you take your next inhalation, reach the arms up over the head, touching the palms of your hands together. And as you're breathing out, bring the hands down to the heart while you step your right foot straight back from there. So you've got your feet at a good hip distance apart. You've got the feet about a meter apart, forward and back. And you bring a bend into the left knee here at the front. If you were to turn your gaze down now, you could see your toes just shining out in front of your knee. That will tell you that the knee is in a safe position as well. If you can't ground the foot down behind you, please leave the heel off the floor, whatever discomfort you might be encountering here. And we'll get into the same arm expression once more. So while you take your next inhale, Either open your arms out wide or keep the elbows bent and squeeze a bit into the shoulder blades. If it feels right, push the chin forward and lightly guide your gaze upwards, getting a sense of lifting a bit more through the sternum. Fingers are spread out and wide open. And as you breathe in now, straighten your front leg. Change nothing about your stance, but if you like, you can take your arms behind your back for a pyramid shape. So you could touch the hands to the forearms or towards the elbows. You could also aim for reverse prayer behind your back, whichever feels right for you. While we're grounded here, inhale, and as you're exhaling, begin to fold now from your hips, making sure that you're standing very firmly on the ball of the left foot, which is the foot at the front. And if you get your nose to point towards your knee, please do so, so the neck can relax. But with the foot at the front grounding more than the back foot, your hips might be in balance. As you draw your shoulders back, your elbows stay lifted, staying here, breathing in and out. Now with the next inhalation, bring a bend into your front knee and lift your spine up halfway. You can stay here if you like, or you can shift the weight into the left foot and beginning to peel the back foot, your right leg off the ground for warrior three variation. <laughs> I 
We will then uh, step the foot back down, leave the heel off the floor and bend your back knee. As you lift up through the upper body, release the arms from behind and find a lunge where you're lifting again through heart, potentially gaze, and the chest opens out wide. And we will release our hands down onto the floor from here and step the foot back to the front end of the mat. Hands can come to shins or thighs, half lift on the inhale and a full forward bend on the exhale. Take a breath, engage the lower abdomen and when you're exhaling, use that mild engagement and curl up into standing. Lift your shoulders up as you inhale and let them shrug down on the exhale. Returning to your mountain shape. So you might decide the positioning of the feet, big toes together or hip distance. And again, start by grounding, lifting through the arches, legs engaged, pelvis in a more neutral position, maybe the lower abdomen supporting that. Turning the fingers as we turn the arms. And then we take a breath in and lift the arms back out, either fully extended or elbows bend, whichever suits you best. And maybe starting to push the chin forward as we lift our gaze lightly and open a bit more through the chest. Notice energetic differences by leaving fingers relaxed or actively extending into the fingers. And when you next inhale, reach the arms up. And as you touch the palms together and breathe out, taking the hands to the heart, you will step your left foot back about a meter, keeping the feet at hip distance apart and starting with a bend into the front knee, which is your right one now. Again, if you feel the back foot grounding to the floor doesn't serve you today, please lift the heel off the floor. We'll come back into the arm opening as you take a breath in, open your arms out wide, or again, elbows can be bent. If you feel confident here and your neck allows you, push the chin forward and guide the gaze upwards. Reaching out into the fingers. With your next inhalation, just straightening through the front leg. And with the out breaths, reaching your arms behind your back. Now, as you might have held onto the forearm or the elbow, make sure that once you get there, you're changing the other arm comes on top. Otherwise, reverse prayer is your option as we breathe in here. And with a firm stance, starting the exhalation as you're leaning forward. Pressing down into the ball of the front foot as you begin to lean your nose towards the knee. It doesn't have to get there. And as you ground down through the ball of your front foot more than through the back leg, you might encourage your hips to be balanced. Lifting the shoulders back, drawing the elbows back and then holding. I know there's a bit of balancing work going on in your legs. So it might be useful to keep your eyes open as you breathe. With the next in-breath now, bring a bend into the front knee. And then starting to lift the spine. Maybe the back heel comes off the floor and please feel welcome to stay there or lifting the leg up behind you like a warrior three. You can do with your arms whatever you require to find balance, but you could also leave them behind your back.
then carefully land the foot back down, lift the heel of the floor and bend your back knee. Let your arms release from behind you and open them back out. You might push the chin forward and lift your gaze, reaching with the sternum, the heart center towards the ceiling. Take a deep breath in as you reach your arms up and an out breath as you bring the hands down. Now we won't step forward this time. I would ask you to bring both knees down onto the floor and to separate the knees a little bit so they're coming to about hip distance. Walking the hands up your thighs as we come to stand on the knees, preparing ourselves for a camel. I don't know, there's lots going on in the mind when I mention uh, postures. So we'll come into it very safely. Placing the hands, uh, palms flat into the lower back. Let your fingers point down towards the floor. Switching the glutes on very gently, a light squeeze into the buttocks. Get a sense of moving your hips a little bit forward from there. Keep your gaze forward and just lift through the sternum, squeezing the shoulder blades. We've got a lot of experience in that today. Elbows going back. And you can stay here or you bring your chin forward, carefully guide it up and then extending through mainly the thoracic spine as you're leaning into the back bend and I didn't mean leaning came out wrong we're still fully engaged and lifting into the back bend if any of you feel like reaching fingers to the heels please do so but practicing moderation rather than reaching really deep and starting to hang in the back get that lift and opening through the body now Let's bend just the hips. Leave the head back. As you bend your hips more, the head will come up naturally as you sit down towards your heels. Your hands can come back in front and you might lean gently forward. You could also rest the head down onto the ground if you like. And if you're into a, a deeper inversion, you might keep your forearms or your hands by your knees and just roll up to the top of the head. Very gentle, supported variation of the rabbit or sasanasana. If you lifted your hips up, bring them back towards the heels and we will come to sit on our mat. We'll ask you to practice a supported fish. Now you can use a block, a cushion or a bolster. All of that is fine. If you're using a bolster and your neck isn't too great today, you might bring a block or a thick cushion, maybe both behind um, the bolster. You will sit in front of it with your back facing the bolster. Now as you lie down over it, you will align your lower rib cage with the beginning of this bolster and you will let your head gently come back. Now if you're using a support underneath the head, make sure the head is actually resting upon it. If you're using, for example, a flat block and the bolster like myself, you still have the head lightly tilted back. So be mindful of that as you could bring the block up higher or use a cushion on top of the block. Your arms can either just rest away from your body and you can leave your feet resting on the floor if your back needs some support today. If the back is happy with the shape, my suggestion is to extend the legs out and even place them gently together. You could encourage with a light activation of your adductors, the inner thigh muscles, to keep your legs together. 
You could also, if your arms and upper back and shoulders are fine, extend the arms over the head. You can do so with a full extension or you could have your arms resting there very softly. So choosing your variation and then letting yourself surrender for a while into this shape. We're still working with the heart opening, tapping into our inner wisdom. As we connect with the idea of moderation. While you stay resting there, you might allow yourself to Take your mind to the moderation you already have in your life. As well as to that, that you might be lacking if you're comfortable with that. As we're trying to balance our energies today, you might want to reflect on the last few days or even this morning on how your activities made you feel. Maybe you met someone, you engaged in a conversation. Notice if that was nourishing, made you happy, or left a bad taste. Encouraging conversations to be from that area of compassion. Maybe you're watching TV series or movies. Reflect on how the last one made you feel that you were watching. balance our energies, we would like to feel balanced more even with what we are taking in during our days. And you can apply this principle to anything you do. Energy is spent moving physically, words you're using, food you're eating, whatever it might be. Maybe a nice intention to take in as we change our shape. So to come off this place, let your arms release back down by your sides. Step your feet down onto the ground, but not too close towards you and place the palms of the hands down. Take an inhale. And as you're exhaling, starting to lift the head with the chin tucked in, pressing down into the hands and the arms to lift yourself up. And you might change if you were using my setup, for example, and bring some cushioning underneath the knees and just to lie yourself straight back down for Shavasana. Or you might choose to open the arms again out and away from the body. As you know, for Shavasana, we would like to be completely comfortable. 
So if you then want a blanket or some cushioning or an eye pillow, please grab that. As usual, the time is short in this practice. So I will ask you to practice Shavasana in complete stillness today. I won't talk to you from here for a little while, but what you could choose is leave your hands in prana mudra if that was useful for you in any way. If this mudra drifts away as you come deeper into your relaxation, don't worry about it. Oftentimes I speak all the way through Shavasana to keep you in your focus. I will leave that up to you today. If you're challenged by that, you might count your breath to keep yourself anchored. Otherwise, just releasing the body completely into stillness for some minutes. to return to your space now by noticing your body on the floor. Slightly increasing the breath. Maybe moving fingers, toes. You could move more if you choose to. Maybe leaving yourself, if you came to that inner balanced state over this short relaxation, you could leave yourself there as you rise to sit. 
And when we sit, we bring the hands again together in front of the heart space. Eyes might be closed, so the gaze might be steady. We will finish with one arm, followed by three shanties for peace. So we're breathing out and then in for the arm. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Slightly bowing the head to the heart, extending to each other. Namaste.